Hey guys, this is Verdier again. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick update. <laughs> yeah, who am I kidding? Quick with me? Yeah, that's gonna happen. Uh, quick update on the uh, whole situation with the cruise control and what's happening and so forth. Uh, I'm not filming outside, I'm filming inside because it's 27 degrees outside and it's a 30 to 40 mile per hour wind and I don't wanna freeze to death. Last Friday, uh, as per instructions from Honda, I took the car to the uh, dealership, another dealership, and they did testing on it, and of course they found nothing. Uh, they did a drive, they said everything's running the way it should be as far as they know, and you know, it may actually be running correctly. I really do not know. That's where the big problem is lying in this entire situation. Uh, they did, however, say they felt uncomfortable testing it at the 30 to 40 mile per hour range, uh, you know, going towards cars that are stopped at a stoplight because, you know, for obvious safety reasons. So in other words, there's no way that they're going to test it where it's going to fail. It's pretty much going to be in my video. So that's a little bit of annoying. I don't blame them for it, but I think it's still a little annoying. So there's no way for me to even show them the failure except through video, which I don't think they really care about. Uh, Catherine called me today to go over this situation with me uh, and, you know, told me, you know, what they said and so forth. And I explained to her that, you know, this could very well be just the way the, the software programming on this particular car is, could be placement of the radar. I, I really do not know, or it could be an actual failure. I said, I've been searching high and low for anyone who might be renting or even Turo, or uh, just renting, I'll just take a look at the cabin, just renting um, a Honda Insight, so I could try it out, and see, uh, you know, see if it had the same situation, I have a feeling it will, but it's very hard to say, and of course there's nobody, nobody's renting them out, even the Honda dealership doesn't rent them out, uh, you know, when you bring your car in, they have car rentals, but not, uh, not an Insight, no, heaven forbid, uh, and while they're, they're smart people over there, I don't think they're overtly knowledgeable on the insight they have you know they're not stupid but you know i'd say a lot of us you know um in the in the forums and so forth probably know a lot more about this car especially those that own the car uh, know how it drives my biggest concern on this entire thing and people say well you know why are you pushing this so hard i mean you know it ain't perfect yeah you're right it's not perfect and maybe i am pushing a little hard the reason i think this particular issue is such a big deal on this car. And for those who don't know, if you're driving in this car and you're going between 30 and 40 miles per hour on a road and you start approaching a stoplight and there are stopped cars there, this car, over 50% of the time, it's, I'm gonna say even, even higher than that, uh, will never see the car ahead of you, never. Uh, it just, it won't. And I get really close before I hit the brakes. Uh, I don't even get a brake alarm or, or proximity alarm or anything. Uh, but then again, I don't know exactly how the brake system uh, works in that aspect besides it's brake mitigation, not brake uh, avoidance. Uh, so, uh, you know, it may wait until so last second that you're just going to get your butt kicked no matter what if you get into an accident. But it doesn't see the car. And the reason why I consider this excessively dangerous on this car, because first of all, I, I thought the Fusion did it more often. But the more I drive the Fusion, the more I see that the Ford Fusion Energy 2019, which also uses a Bosch system like this, uh, it's probably not the same exact one. I'm sure they have their own programming, you know, special programming done and so forth. It, it pretty much never does that. I mean, it has situations where it doesn't recognize cars all the time, but that's limitations of the system. But getting back to why I find this so dangerous and what, what I told Catherine on the phone, why I felt it so dangerous, is that a lot of us live in these smaller states, uh, these less populated states, or in these states there are a lot of places where um, you end up with roads, back roads. Uh, you can call them back roads, but here, you know, Maine, we got a lot of... Whoa! Guy just hit me. Unbelievable. Well, I'm recording, so we'll record it. <sighs> that sucks. I got your license plate. Yes. Yep. All right. So, basically, it's a smushed license plate. I don't know what I don't know what they do without that. I guess you get another license plate. <laughs> I got no idea. <sighs> All right. All right. Well, that was fun. Well, at least, at least Ruby didn't take any damage, uh, and so forth. Um, not such a good driver. 
But at least we'll have some fun for today, looking into what happened for the day. <sighs> that was kind of ridiculous. Um, guy in a Super Duty decided to hit my car, uh, smushed my license plate. Um, and uh, I'll have to call and find out about replacing the license plate on the car because it's all smashed in. And no damage to the car, but he did hit relatively hard. Well, all right, let's get back to it. Um, I'm gonna film this guy's license plate too, just in case this turns into an issue because it, I'm a little pissed off. Uh, well, give you an idea what's going on is the reason why I consider this so dangerous is because of places, give you an example of Maine, we've got a lot of roads because we got a lot of small towns and, and, and so forth. We're not, you know, not a lot of huge cities. And we got a lot of small plant, uh, towns and places. And we go out there into a lot of places. And those roads are usually two lane roads, one going one way, one going the other way. And they range in speed limits from 35, well, 25, 35, all the way up to like 55 miles per hour. They're essentially our highways in most of the cases going. And many people are gonna use their cruise control on these kind of roads. And as you're driving, you'll be going 50, and then and then you'll have to downgrade to 45, and then eventually you have to downgrade to 35. You, you set your cruise control down to 35, you end up going into a small town, or, or mini, yeah, yeah, mini town. And there end up being maybe a, let's say a, uh, you know, a, a light there. Uh, and there's a car stopped at the light. Uh, and you approach him. And this situation can is, it happens a lot in these uh, in these uh, drives in these uh, states, and the potential for accidents happening I think are much much higher in this situation. Uh, and because I mean you gotten used to using your cruise control, you know it works well. You know you expect the car to stop, and people aren't paying attention. They're going to end up bashing into, into the back of the car, so they're going to have to slam on the brakes at the last second and maybe even hit them. Uh, I consider this a serious uh, problem uh, and potentially, uh, you know, dangerous. Uh, people can get hurt. Uh, I told Catherine that was my biggest concern. I have, you know, I've talked to some of the people on the um, on the forums. And, uh, you know, they, they showed me some things in the, in the manual. And yes, there are, you know, it does say that, you know, with a 25 mile per hour difference between speeds, sometimes uh, it won't catch cars uh, in, uh, you know, it, it won't see the car in the radar. The big problem with this situation, uh, obviously, is, is what I'm saying. I mean, you can end up in accidents with that. And the fact that the uh, Ford Fusion Energy doesn't have that problem, uh, which means it is a mitigatable problem. It's not, uh, it's not something that's just going to, uh, it's not something that can't be resolved, that there is something that's causing it to be more susceptible in this car. Now, I can't get a hold of another inside to drive. Nobody's renting one. No Turos are renting one. Uh, yeah, gee, surprise there. No, no dealers, and I'm, no dealer's gonna let me drive one. They're never gonna test it properly to do it. Uh, so at the end of the conversation, you know, she basically gave I guess the spiel she's supposed to give, you know, she says, you know, keep an eye on the system. If it starts having more problems, you take it to a dealership and we can continue from that point on. So essentially I, there's nothing they're going to do. I, I don't expect them really to do anything, but it's a little disconcerting and a little concerning for me that that's all that's going to happen. I, I told Catherine, I believe it's very, very important that this be pushed up higher up into Honda because I can see this becoming a lawsuit. I really do. I could, I could see accidents happening. I can see lots of problems happening in the future if uh, people uh, start over-depending on these systems. And I don't over-depend on them. I use them a lot, but I don't over-depend because I'm careful and I, I, and I pay attention to my driving. Uh, and I don't, you know, and I'm not here to diss this car. I love this car. Uh, but, you know, the last thing in the world we need is, is a bunch of... Uh, is a you know it's a bunch of lawsuits or, or or even people hurt because of an issue and if nobody wants to deal with it uh, or can't deal with it then we've got a problem. Deep in my heart, I think this is a software issue. I think maybe the software written you know towards the insight is a little more susceptible to this problem rather than the Ford Fusion Energy. But I really don't know. And as I said, I'm not getting much response in the uh, in the um, uh, in the forums, and nobody in the forums have really rec uh, you know told me about this happening. And if they have, I forgot about it. I do apologize. 
So I don't have any people responding to me telling me that, yeah, this happens to me and it happens often. So without another insight to drive, to drive around for a little bit, I have no way of knowing what's going on. So at this point, I'm going to tell you I feel that most of the time the adaptive cruise control on this car is generally pretty safe um, and, pretty re and pretty reliable. It runs very well, but you need to be very careful. You should be very careful with all of them, but this one particularly, it has a very fatal flaw that could get you into an accident. Uh, and if I'm doing a rating, I'd say the Ford Fusion Energy beats out this car miles and miles when it comes to their cruise control for that particular reason. And the funny thing is, is the Ford Fusion Energy, its electronic systems aren't running right properly anyway. Uh, its uh, lane departure system isn't working right. Uh, and of course, it's throwing up no errors. So just because Honda checks for errors, does you know, error codes and all that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I mean, it does. I mean, they're trying. I'm not saying they're incompetent or anything. They're trying. But it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean there isn't a problem. So if there are any of you out there running into this, please let me know. Verdier 400 at gmail.com. Let the uh, people on the uh, forums know. Uh, so we can discuss this. Uh, the limitations of the cruise control on this particular car. And... Uh, we uh, will uh, go from there. Uh, anyone in Maine uh, has a uh, has a Honda in, uh, Insight, uh, you know, third gen, who wants to get together. You know, we could trade cars. Uh, you know, just drive around with each other and hang on and see if yours does it. If yours doesn't do it, then I know that I have something specific to this car. And before I go, there is one other thing I just noticed. Uh, it happened today. First time I've noticed this ever happening. I was sitting at a light, uh, paused in the cruise control car uh, ahead of me in the, uh, in, in the stoplight was maybe five feet ahead of me, a little bit more than usual. And this guy, um, and all of a sudden, right up here, right up there, where it would have a filled icon, a filled icon of a car, because the cruise control was set and it was on pause, standby, waiting to go when they went, it flicked off and on, off and on, off and on, and it did that two or three times. It went from full to outline, which means no radar content, and then full, and then the outline again, then full to outline. That's the first time I've noticed that. So I'm gonna keep an eye out that and see if that happens a lot. If that does, then maybe I do have an issue that's not showing up. Uh, so we're gonna go from there. Any guys have any opinions, ideas, uh, let me know. Um, and you guys take care, and I hope you enjoyed the excitement of people, someone smushing my uh, uh, license plate on the front of my car. Uh, that was very obnoxious. I'm filming his license plate on his car uh, before I go, uh, just so I can get in touch just in case uh, something behind the license plate's broken. And we'll go from there. Take care, guys, and have a good day.